Herod was struck by the angel of God, died, and his body was eaten by worms. Their sin was that they replaced God with themselves, considering themselves as gods and blaspheming the one true God. This is all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Salamat po, uh, Ms. Teresita, sa testimonya mo kahit kailangan mong iyakan para uh, basahin sa amin. Uh, bago yung isa munang follow-up question ko sa inyo, gusto kong i-acknowledge yung presensya online ni Senator Cynthia Villar. Salamat, Senator Cynthia, sa pagdalo nyo. At ang uh, at Minority Leader, Senator Coco Pimentel. Salamat ka ayos sa uh, pagdalo. Um, kung walang uh, opening statement si Senator Coco at si Senator Cynthia, uh, bago yung uh, interjection ni Majority Leader uh, sa Department of Justice, isang mabilis na follow-up question sa ngayon, uh, Ms. Teresita o Ms. Ging, at Ging, just for the record, guilty ba kayo? Doon sa mga krimen na inakusa sa inyo, yung pagnakaw ng 3 million pesos, yung pag-fornicate sa iba pang mga ministro, guilty ba kayo sa mga iyon? Of course not. All right, Salamat kayo. Uh, Majority Leader, uh, for your interjection with the Thank DOJ. You, Madam Chair. Uh, nothing to do with the previous testimony. Magpapaalam po kasi ako kasi magsasalita po ako sa Liga ng Mga Barangay and I, uh, the Minority Leader is already here uh, to fill up some uh, legal questions likewise. But, Madam Chair, before I leave, gusto ko lang tanongin ang, uh, hindi ko kasi nakita kanina, dito pala ang Department of Justice relative to my previous questions uh, uh, answered by the DFA. This is speculative, academic, and uh, purely legal if, whenever, wherever, uh, if a an extradition uh, request is lodged before the DFA. There is under the, the PD, which I cited before, a process which would necessitate the Department of Justice to file a petition. But that is another court. And that is another court which would constitute as the extradition court here in the Philippines. And if there is going to be an extradition hearing, the purpose is not to determine the guilt or innocence of the accused, but whether they would fall under the ambit of our extradition treaty. Is that correct? Who will answer? Attorney Torrevillas or Attorney Quintana? Speculative lang ito. Ano lang to? Uh, Senior State Counsel Quintana, I believe, majority leader. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, sir. Good, mo good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, as to the um, as, to, as to what will happen on, I mean, uh, should the De Department of Foreign Affairs later on receive a request for the extradition of um, Mr. Uh, Kiboloy and the uh, uh, present criminal cases are filed against him? Um, the the Philippines, as a requested state under the Philippines uh, U.S. Extradition Treaty, has the option to um, postpone the filing of the extradition case um in which case um postponed uh only but, the filing your honor uh -huh. but uh, is the extradition court would be constituted here in the philippines uh yes your honor not uh, necessarily the the court where the hearing is being conducted yes, it, it would be a separate um separate proceeding and as i mentioned uh it, it might be postponed or we can we can accept the request and file the case in a separate extradition case it will not be a criminal court no your honor uh, as you correctly pointed out earlier um the extradition court is not there to determine the guilt or innocence of the uh, subject of the thank request. you thank you uh, attorney but my, my my second question is related to the first question and to the previous questions the extradition shall not be granted under article 4 when the person sought to be when the person sought has been tried convicted or acquitted tama po ba yan? so may pag may pending case na rito at mabilis yung proseso conviction or acquittal hindi na siya pwedeng i-extradite is that correct um your honor um 
under Article 4, uh, that may be a ground for refusal of the request for extradition. But uh, that in that case, uh, so you're, you're on ano po dun parang, uh, uh, in effect, parang double jeopardy. But in this instance po, um, there is no double jeopardy. Kasi po yung... I'm saying double jeopardy. Uh, one of the grounds for refusal would be when there has been a trial, conviction, or acquittal that's explicitly stated under Article 4, prior prosecution. Double do do jeopardy will not apply because of the concept of dual sovereignty. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, mas, ang, ang tanong ko, mas makakabuti ba na mas mabilis ang trial sa Pasig which would result in either conviction or acquittal dahil hindi na pwedeng ma-extradite? Ma um, sir, it, it, it's independent of the request for extradition. So, regardless if the, if the criminal cases uh, are terminated, uh, I mean, are expedited, it will not affect the extradition request. Siguro, aralin niyo mabuti itong Section 1 ng Article 4. Parang very explicit naman ito. Uh, you still have time. Number three question. I learned that the Correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure you're following this through news accounts, that the Department of Justice of the United States dismissed the charges against a certain Miss Duenas. Duenas, uh, tama po ba yon? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Yes, and this was just a few weeks ago. Last week, Your Honor. Last week. October 7. So, ang tanong ko rito, and this will probably be uh, a lingering question. What would be the effect of the dismissal of the U.S. cases against is is uh, Duenas a miss or a, a male? Ano ba yan? He. He. Female? She? Female. Female. What would be the effect of the dismissal of the U.S. cases against Miss uh, Duenas to the pending cases of uh, Pastor Kibuloy in the Philippines, since some of the elements would be the same? Uh, Your Honor, if I may defer, defer to uh, Prosecutor Torrevillas. Torre, Torre Deputy State Prosecutor Torrevillas, please. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Senator Talentino. Uh, it will not affect the cases pending against Pastor Kibuloy, considering that uh, Ms. Duenas is not one of the accused in those cases. Oh, one, one of the accused in cases pending before the Regional Trial Court here in Pasig, or or in, in the United States uh, uh, Department of Justice? San po? San jurisdiction? Uh, before the Regional Trial Court of Pasig and Quezon City, Mr. Uh, Mr. Senator. So it won't affect? Yes. But the, the, there is uh, an, 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 a, an interrelationship between the elements involved in the U.S. cases uh, and the Philippine cases. Tama po ba yan? And probably I'm, I'm not, I'm I, not uh, I, jumping the gun on what uh, the defense counsels were doing. So, what long effect? As, as I've said, this is just speculative. It will not affect uh, the cases pending before the Regional Trial Court of Quezon City and the Regional Trial Court of Pasig because uh, Ms. Duenas is not one of the accused, neither she, one of the uh, witnesses for the prosecution. But uh, some of the defendants uh, in the case pending before the U.S. Department of Justice are likewise defendants, here, are accused here in the Philippines. And I understand there would be a second hearing come May, come May 20 uh, before the U.S. Department of Justice. Tama po ba yan? Uh, I am not aware of that. Okay. So, paano naman kung yun ang magkaroon ng ibang desisyon while pending dito sa sa Pasig and Quezon City ibang kaso. Any speculative answer? O kung wala, mahirap it, it has no connection at no all connection because at all. Opo. different jurisdictions, different Di elements. Again, Madam Chair, maraming salamat po sa pagbibigay sa akin ng pagkakataong uh, makapagsalita. I reiterate again uh, my earlier statements that respect and dignity should permeate the entire proceedings today. And I hope uh, that the dignity of the Senate through this committee will be enshrined, uh, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat po sa pagkakataong ito at maraming salamat sa mga resource persons natin na dumalo. Maganda umaga po sa inyong lahat. Dagang salamat.
Ang nga po kayo sinimulang abusuhin uh, ayon sa inyong testimony at alaala? It was in October of 1993. October of 1993. So, 31, uh, 31 years ago po. Yes po. All right. Uh, tapos ulitin ko lang po yung nabalitaan kong fasting o dry fast. So hindi kayo pinakain, hindi kayo pinainom ng tubig. Uh, ilang araw nga po ba ginawa ito sa inyo? At wala po bang kasamahan ninyo doon na sinubukang tulungan kayo? Of course, nobody would ever dare help me because upon instruction na hindi nga ako ipak... And they did not even allow, they were not even allowed to talk to me, not nor even to come near to me. So actually there were two sets of fasting <clears throat> uh, given to me. One set was, there was eight, 10 days fasting. There was no food, no water. Uh, it was Ninet Ukya who gave me the list of instruction. And number one in the list is to do dry fast for the first 10 days. <clears throat> Sino po nagbigay ng instruction? Ninet Okyas. Nenet Okyas. Yeah. Okay po. And then, I only was able to eat a little amount of rice and viand on the 39th day because when you had, when you have fast, you had fasted, hindi naman kailangan kakain ka agad. So, there was water, then am, then lugaw, and then finally on the 39th day, that was the time I was able to eat rice. And then after that, there was that second round of fasting which was even more miserable. It started on February 6, 1999, and there were other workers also. And that's, that was very miserable because it was like this. We were given five days or sometimes seven days. It was a kind of a, a series of fasting. The first, second, third days were for dry fasting, meaning you cannot, you were not allowed to drink, of course, to eat food, dry foods. And on the fourth, uh, sometimes it's water, it's sometimes it's arm, sometimes it's lugaw. Then another five days, the same pattern, sometimes it became seven. It ended on the May, May, it ended on the month of May because I have my diary on that. So yung pangalawang dry fasting, tatlong buwan na may iba't ibang classing fasting for five days or seven days, one to three days na dry fasting, yes. on the fourth day may tubig, o yung am, yung am yung pinakuloan ng sinaing, di ba? Yung and, pinapainom ng mga lolo't lola natin sa mga baby noong panahon ng and, World and, War II. Yung sabaw ng ano po? Sabaw. Lugaw. sabaw. Ah, sabaw ng lugaw. Or, or lugaw. So over three months, may ganitong series ng mga iba't ibang klase ng dry fasting. Yes po. But I was together with other workers also because they, they were also punished. But I was the longest. I stayed there for the longest uh, three, three months. And yung una pong dry fast, yung unang set ng dry, pagpapadry fast sa inyo na sampung araw, walang pagkain, walang, walang tubig. Sampung araw na walang tubig at sampung araw na walang pagkain? Yes po, that's true. Paano niyo po na-survive yun? I did not even think I would survive. Apo. Because of course, it, the, the place is cold, was cold. And then every time in the morning when I took a bath, so parang doon ko na lang na, na, nalalasap yung tubig. Kaya I keep taking a bath three times a day. Iniinom nyo na lang yung Halos, hindi uh, na inom, tubig kasi pampaligo. Natatakot ka namang baka masira yung tiyan mo. Parang, par parang ganun lang. Parang... And after 39 days, ganun ulit. Uh, pinainom muna kayo ng tubig, and ng am, and then pinakain ng lugaw, and finally, kanin. Yes, on the 39th day. But there was a month, uh, I think it was December, month of December, may kinain na rin ako doon. Kaya lang, Again, maybe they were not satisfied with the result. Maybe they wanted me to really slowly kill me. So again, I fasted for, I had another uh, series of fasting that was, as what I have said, it started on February 6th and ended on the month of May. During those two times po, yung dalawang set ng dry fasting, yung unang sampung araw at yung pangalawang umabot ng uh, tatlong buwan, 
Uh, nakakulong kayo noon or were you restrained in any way? No, it, uh, I was just there in the mountain, in the prayer mountain. Not really uh, kulong, but the place is big naman. So I had to go to the prayer house. Uh, I had to pray, I think, three times uh, a day. Nine o'clock, twelve o'clock, or four times a day. Four and then six o'clock in the evening. And kanina sabi nyo dun sa pangalawang set ng dry fasting sa inyo, over three months, may ibang workers pa kayong kasama, bagamat hindi sila kasing tagal na pinadry fast tulad ninyo. Bukod dyan sa pagpapadry fast, uh, yung ganyang abuso sa inyo, meron ka bang na-witness na iba pang mga pang-aabuso sa iba pang workers? Yes po. Actually, there were workers who were placed in a, in a closed tent Mm -hmm. Parang Bartolina, ang, ang tawag namin doon, Bartolina. They were placed in a closed tent. There were even torches uh, placed around because during the evening, they would uh, put fire on the, uh, the torches. And then they pulled and peed inside the tent, closed tent. And then, of course, they suffered too much heat in, the, in daytime and the colds in the evening. But eventually, they managed to escape uh, one by one, but the only one who survived, she was rescued because she was dehydrated already. So the only one who survived, na yes. rescue. Yeah, it was Lani Alfaro. Dehydrated, si Miss Lani Alfaro. Ano po nangyari dun sa ibang nag-escape dun sa mga tents na yon? Actually, because there were ministers who were also used as their security guards, they were actually helped by the ministers to just escape. So may mga minister din naman na naawa sa kanila at Meron din tinulungan po. silang makatakas. Yes po. Okay. Tapos, uh, Ms. Teresita, atiging, tama po ba na subject kayo, naging subject kayo ng attempted assassination? Uh, ito po ba yung sinabing ginawa ng angel of death? Of course, I would really think that way because I was just a mere worker, a civilian, and then why would these people come to my place, bring those light, uh, firearms? They were there, and if it was only to serve the warrant of arrest for my, the, my co-ministers, why would bring, uh, why would they have a backup car? Then I was made to believe that it was really their intention to harass me and to terrorize me in my place. May, da may dala po silang warrant of arrest? Saan yes. galing po yung warrant uh, ngayon? As I have stated, there was actually one minister who had a problem, no? Then he was gunned down in Davao City. Then I actually helped him uh, settle in my place. And then... Ito po yung nag-survive ng assassination attempt. Survived. Then he was served by that warrant of arrest. And then, because he was in my house, I helped him actually. Ah, so nung pumunta yung mga uh, may dalang firearms at may backup vehicle, yung sineserve nilang warrant ay para dun sa nag-survive sa assassination attempt na kinupkop nyo. Yes po, actually para sa kanya. But I was made to believe that ako rin, pwede rin nila akong patayin. Bakit? Because there was one time, the, the, there was, uh, the, 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 because he was, the, that Alex Camilla was with a policeman. Bakit kailangan nila akong parang scale sale nila yung opisina ko? Bakit parang tinitingnan nila kung nasaan ako doon? Kung ang, ang gusto lang talaga, if they really wanted the want of Aris to be served with that person, why came to my office? For what? So yung I, Alex Camya ay may kasamang police o siya mismo ay police o PNP? No, he was with, uh, a policeman, an official policeman during that time. At saka, meron din po siyang kasamang siyempre driver. At saka, because I only learned later that there were two vehicles actually, but during those times, isa lang ang alam ko. Nung nakausap ko yung backup driver, kasi he is with me now, doon ko lang nalaman na may backup driver, may backup vehicle pala sila. Ngayon, Ms. Teresita, uh, at tiging, pioneering member po kayo yes. ng KOJC. Uh, alam nyo rin po ba yung business model 
uh, ng fundraising ninyo at paano ito nagsimula? Kasi nabanggit nyo, naging head kayo ng logistics, kayo po nag-organize ng mga caroling, yung mga solicitation. Uh, paano po yun nagsimula at anong, uh, anong alam ninyo dun sa kabu ang business model? Yes po, the, the, the caroling, uh, caroling really had become or maybe has even until now become one of the sources of funds in the ministry. In 1988, I was able to join here in Manila and we were only caroling the cities, uh, within the cities of the NCR. But when I led, when I was given the opportunity to lead the fundraising, I made it nationwide. I actually organized the nationwide caroling, Madam Chair. Then what happened, I, uh, I had uh, every province, I had leaders overseeing 70 to 100 uh, carolers, including uh, adults who would be cooking and washing their clothes. And in the NCR alone, we had, I think, 13 leaders overseeing 20 to 30 members also. Do a caroling from 8 o'clock in the morning to uh, sometimes 10 o'clock in the evening. Going around the cities of Manila, just caroling all the people here in the <clears throat> Metro Manila. And then, because I had a quota of, I start, it started with 10 million until it became uh, 15 million. Of course, they also had a quota. I also gave them the quota to meet my total quota of 15 million. So, sa bawat probinsya, uh, nung ginawa nyo ng nationwide yung caroling, din na lang sa NCR, may isa kayong leader na bawat isa may 17 to 100 carolers. Uh, at dito naman sa NCR, kung saan kayo nagsimula, naging... 13 leaders na may 20 to 30 members each. So, i-multiply lang po natin. So, sila po yung pinapatawan nyo noon ng quota para mabuo yung 10 to 15 million pesos. A ano po ito? Per day? Per week? No, that's one month. Of, uh, per hardly. month. Yep, yes. Per month. And uh, so, 14 hours a day sila. Pwedeng nag nagkakarol, nag-fundraise, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yes po. Ganun po, ganun po katagal. Alright. Uh, Dagan salamat, Ms. Teresita. At tiging, please stay on sa hearing natin dahil yung mga uh, kas kasama kong senado, mga kauban ko, including our minority leader, may have qu questions for you. Yes, the minority leader would like to interject now. You have the floor, Senator okay. Foko. Uh, Ma'am Ging, no? so, dito lang ako nababahala sa sinabi mo na dry fasting, yes, two po. times ang, ang experiences mo. And sa experience mo, it was a form of punishment. Very much a form of punishment. But it was actually a disguise like a spiritual discipline on me. Okay, but, this, this, but it was presented still as a disciplinary measure. Yes, okay. But uh, have you seen dry fasting as a form of a ritual or not as a form of a punishment? Is it also practiced there? Actually, there were two meanings, no? Of course, when we were... Uh, we were instructed to do dry fasting, we would always consider it as our sanctification, as our uh, cleansing on us, because we, will always, we would always believe that we were, because we, would, we were always made to believe that we were sinners, and we, we do accept that we were sinners, so we had to go through fasting. In, in the two particular, as I mentioned, because there are two particular yes, cases, I don't know yung mga months, but in your particular case, punishment. At first, I did not consider it as punishment. Now, what you consider, how was it presented to you? You have to undergo dry fasting as a punishment? A spiritual discipline on the first. Oh. Talaga, spiritual discipline. Kung, di, kung doon yung discipline, punishment, di ba? Okay, yung yes. pangalawa, yes, po. Well, yung pangalawa, was it what? A fun, punishment also, yung pangalawa? Mas lalong punishment on the second round. Maybe okay. because they saw me alive still and still kicking. Uh, it was not their intention to really see me alive. Okay. That's why I had my se second series of fasting. But so uh, observation mo, tagal ka sa kingdom eh. Meron, uh, you, you also undergo fasting as a part of a ritual, not as a punishment. Tam tam yes, there are many times. As severe as dry fasting? No, the, mine was the, the, actually was the worst. Yun yung mga fasting na alam natin, yung babawasan yes, mo lang yung yes, quantity ng kakainin mo, siguro gano'n, ano? Yes, yun ba yung meaning ng, yun yung sa ritual. Yes, okay. ritual. Ngayon, sa karanasan mo, 
Ikaw kasi obviously nag-survive ka ng dry fasting mo as punishment eh. Sa ka, sa personal knowledge mo, meron kayong kasama sa KOJC na nag-suffer ng masamang consequence as a result of dry fasting as a form of punishment? Wala naman akong alam. Because I left 1993. Ah, when did you leave? 1999 pa po. 1999. Sige po. Pero sabi mo, founding member ka, so pero wala kayong nakita pala. Okay, except sa... So far, wala. Kasi sana, i- Kung meron, ha, kung meron, i-encourage natin sila ngayon na magreklamo sila because uh, this, might be a, this might be a violation of the revised penal code. How is it enforced pala? How is it enforced? Sabi mo kasi, sa prayer mountain, you're free to roam around eh. Pwede kang gumalaw. So, paano kung super gutom ka na? You, can you cheat? Uh, can you cheat on the dry fast, fasting punishment? Um, we were tempted to do that. But because we're so afraid, baka madagdagan pa yung araw pag malaman. Okay. Uh, meron kang kinikwento na hindi, although hindi ikaw yung involved, sabi mo lang na may, may close tent, may mga ganon. Tapos may mga ministro na sila na mismo nagpatakas dun sa mga pinapanish. You know? So, uh, so naawa na rin siguro sila na baka napaka-severe nung mga punishment. But that's, you did not experience that eh. Kaya medyo, ano yan. Did you, did you actually witness it? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. And then did the ministers actually tell you na pinatakas namin ito si... No, the, I was just told uh, after those incidents when they got connected okay. to me. So kasi ang lumalabas na issue dito, Madam Chair, is uh, if there is a religious group or an organized group na meron silang system of uh, punishment, Baka yung mga, yung mga severity naman ng mga punishment, ba, sa, baka some of these punishments already crossed the line, ano? na they may, they may amount to already violation of the revised penal code. Sige. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you also, uh, Minority Leader. Um, so, Mr. Resita, uh, at iging, uh, saliw, uh, uh, again, salamat kaayo and please stay on for uh, the rest of our hearing, lalo na kung may ibang mga issues na ma-raise na gusto rin naming itanong sa inyo. At this point po, our next witness is Yulia Tartova, a former pastoral and victim survivor of sexual abuse at the hands of Apollo Kiboloy. She's joining our hearing live from Ukraine. Uh, just to refresh uh, our memory, Let's listen to Yulia's video, and after that, she uh, is here to answer any other questions that we might have. So let's just uh, view again uh, Yulia's video uh, at that time as Elia Sofia. I was about 21 years old. It was the 2014. Where did you stay? I stay in a dorm, like a building, a separate building. And most of the people there was Ukrainian. You tell me how your relationship with Pastor Kiboloy developed or unfolded. Yeah, at first, our relationship was very good, very warm, very friendly. I didn't feel everything like, oh, he's like liking me. No, there's nothing about that. He transferred me in one room. I live with the Jack Roy. She is pastoral and one of the closest. Like, she's very close to pastor. And I, li I live with her in one room. And little by little, some girls like uh, Jack Roy and other girls of pastorals uh, are, are Filipino. They used to fellowship to me like, are you ready to sacrifice everything to God, to the Father, uh, like pastor? Of course, I already sacrificed. I leave my job. I leave my school. I leave my friends and my parents. I already sacrificed a lot of so what. What do you mean? I cannot understand because I already sacrificed and took the life that I choose and I live and uh, I believe that this is God's way for me. So, and they were just like, even your body, you can sacrifice. When he see that there is no Ukrainian girls and I'm alone, so he starts more and more to talk to me. Are you want to sacrifice? Are you want to sacrifice everything, even your body? I'm very innocent. I really didn't. Nobody talked to me like straight, straightly that, that this is what will happen. And uh, I remember that time came and Ateja came to me in the night and she said, uh, 
uh, I want you to massage pastor's uh, feet before he sleep. When Atajak called me for night uh, to massage him, uh, I, I didn't think that this is what will happen, even though I was nervous. And she saw that I'm crying, but I'm still do what they want me to do. I wake up, out, I put this pajama and I'm crying, I'm scaring and it's night and they put me, because I never stay in the, the pastor alone in the night, in the dark, <laughs> and I was nervous. It, it was big room. And before room, there is a little room. So Atajak lead me there, and she said, go in pastor's room. And I just stayed in this little room because I was scary, and I was crying, and pastor was waiting for me. Until he realized that I'm not coming, and he by myself went out and pulled me in his, in his room. And I was, like, scary, and he said, like, massage my feet here, 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 and then Little by little, and I was very nervous, and it was dark. And suddenly he started to move my hands to put on his <laughs> He said, massage here, and I said, oh my God, okay, and I massage. And after that, uh, little by little, he just turned to me, and he removed my clothes. And uh, I even can, because I was very shocked, I was like, I cannot Plain because I I was nervous. If this is what happened, he just removed my clothes and have women below the age of eighteen years old were they also being used? Um... Yeah, I didn't know about this for how many years till I, before I left Philippines. Uh, I heard from other like she's very close to pastor, but she grew up with him. She's a senior there, and she's pastoral. And I heard that. Oh, you're crying because I always complain about this pastoral ministry. And she said, Oh, you're crying that you're a pastoral. At least you're mature, but I become a pastoral in 12 years old. This is time when I was like shocked. The next day when I heard this, uh, that I become a pastoral in 12 years old, uh, I started to fight with pastor and ask why is it normal? Is Miss Yulia, 